Hello again everyone. In today's video I will show you how I made this Japanese inspired wooden keepsake box which unusually feature a couple of watercolour paintings. So without further ado let's get straight into it. It all started with a few scraps of cedar I had lying around that were left over from a jewellery box I had made last year. Firstly I cut the four sides of the box and used half lap joints to connect the pieces. I chose this joint as it was an easy joint to cut and I knew it wouldn't be seen in the final product. The body of the box was then glued and left to dry for a few hours. I then cut a rectangular piece of cedar for the bottom of the box and used a round over bit on my router to soften the edges. The base was then glued and screwed to the now dried body of the box as shown here. I chose this method as I knew I would be lining the base of the box with some nice green felt which would hide the screws. I then cut some small rectangular pieces of cedar to use as trim on the top and bottom edges of the box. These were simply cut with 45 degree corners and then glued into place and held with small spring clamps. Small red gum pieces were then cut for some contrasting corner detailing. The handle for the lid was also cut from a small piece of red gum and I chose to use two small pieces of brass rod to connect the handle to the lid of the box. You can see some of my initial drawings I made here also. I also decided to use the same brass rod to accent the corners of the box. The lid was made from two rectangular pieces of cedar, the first designed to fit inside the box to centralise the lid and the box top itself having the corners removed to provide some interesting detail. These were simply glued together and held into place with spring clamps. It was now time to use some two-part epoxy glue to glue both the handles of the box lid and also the four corner detail pieces into place. Note I had some acetone in the small black lid which I used on cotton tips to thoroughly clean any unwanted drips of glue. This was then left to dry for a few hours. From the very beginning of making this box, I had always intended to apply some watercolour images to the box. This was a process which I had never done before, so I decided to do a test by painting a small drawing and gluing it to wood with some wood glue, and then applying some varnish to see how the final image looked. I was pretty happy with how this turned out, and was mostly worried about the watercolours smudging with the glue and varnish, which luckily did not happen. I decided to place the watercolour images on the two end panels of the box as I did not want to overdo it with the painted finish. And as the box was starting to have a Japanese look to it, in particular the handle, I decided to use some Japanese inspired watercolour images. These were of a koi fish for one of the ends and some bamboo for the other end. I first applied some magenta and sap green washes to the two pieces of watercolour paper I had cut to size to fit the box ends exactly. 
I then used some basic pen and wash techniques to complete the two small paintings. Once the paintings were thoroughly dry, I carefully glued them into place with wood glue. I placed some protective pieces of paper over the top and lightly clamped them until dried. Here are the paintings after removing the clamps. It was then time for some final sanding with some fine sandpaper. And I also used some fine steel wool to get into some of the tighter places. Now I applied some varnish to the box which was slightly thinned out with some mineral turpentine. I applied three coats to the box using fine steel wool between coats. 
Once the final coat was thoroughly dried, I rubbed the entire box over with a balled up piece of copy paper to knock off any edges. And here is the completed box. I really hope you have enjoyed watching this video as much as I have enjoyed creating this piece. And I hope that I have fired up your passion for woodworking and or watercolour painting. And I would love to hear any comments or questions you may have, or maybe just a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe if you are interested in seeing more unique pieces like this one. Bye for now.